Dalvina, Guia Dolosana, Angita Talitakini and Navarong and Bula FM at Golden Point Resort, Basendo Nambando and Ahere, Vinaka. Bula Vinaka and Adam Gotevita, or two and ninety. Anda tali tahu kalau lebaran baru mana bulan fem, nampun tu ane sel. Nada aku macam leh sih, baru keraki ane sih nampun bulan fem nampun tu ane sel. Kalau ngau rakyat kita ni buat apa? Anda tali tahu kalau lebaran mana bulan fem, nampun tu ane sel. Ungu boleh lusi. Bulan fem nampun dua ane sel. I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, the cyclone that never happened leaves people confused. Cleanup starts in the aftermath of floods. And later on in sports, less than 24 hours remains before the start of the Hong Kong Sevens. Fiji is tonight officially out of Cyclone Zena's danger zone. This time last night, as the restriction of movement order was announced, Thousands of people, especially along southern Vitilevo and Kandavu, were bracing themselves for yet another devastating cyclone to hit Fiji in just over a month. But as the hours passed by, all predictions and forecasts about the path and effects of the cyclone fizzled out overnight. There was hardly any showers and the winds were just as insignificant. Fijians woke up this morning wondering just what happened to Zena. Ellen Stahls reports. The roads were clear and it was eerily quiet. Everyone, especially those along the southern Vitilevu corridor, were expecting the worst. We are issuing uh, the respective warnings for the places in Fiji that are going to be affected. Uh, towards the midnight, we would um, uh, sort of feel the, um, you know, the brunt of this um, uh, tropical cyclone. Zina. Many stayed up hours waiting for the worst. Evacuation centers were open and constant warnings were being broadcast throughout the night. But the expected cyclone turned out to be one of the quietest storms on record. The weather situation we are feeling at the moment is just light breeze. Eh? We are preparing for cyclone Zina, which we are supposed to be with us tonight. The rare occurrence of the capital being affected was also expected. But hardly a leaf moved here. The talk of the town this morning was... What happened to Zina? The winds were not as strong as Winston. According to the Met Office in Nandi, Zina unexpectedly changed direction at the last minute. Uh, because it's a very fast moving system, this time yesterday it was uh, closer coming in here. But then it clipped uh, just uh, off the coast of Kandabu, we are in the south of uh, the Sasamala and then on to the love group in a matter of just 12 hours. Neville Coop of Nandraki has a theory on why, apart from changing direction, Zena also lost momentum. Nandraki posted on their Facebook page, and I quote, when winds above the surface strengthened the vertical nature of the core of the cyclone tilts, and ultimately the upper level circulation can separate from the lower circulation. This is known as wind shear, and nothing kills a cyclone as quickly as strong wind shear. There is some talk of a possibility that a weakened Zena, now in the Tongan waters, is expected to make a U-turn in the next few days. If so, Fijians will be more than prepared. After all, we've had a lot of practice. In the meantime, the talk of the town, for now at least, is how really did we get spared by Zena? Ellen Stahls, FBC News. As of this morning, there were 329 evacuation centers nationwide that had been activated, sheltering more than 15,000 evacuees. This was confirmed by National Disaster Management Office Director Kapusi Tuipangalele at a briefing this afternoon. He added that in the western 200 evacuation centers with 11,294 evacuees, the Central Division, 18 with 920 people, the Eastern Division saw 49 centers open in Kandavu and Koro, and in the north, 62 evacuation centers opened with 1,841 people. Luifangalele also explained why there was a delay in the lift of the restriction of movement order this morning. When it was given out yesterday, the order was given until further notice so that we would progressively uh, look at uh, what has happened and based also from the, uh, from the uh, uh, event 
that have actually been given to us by the Met Office in London, and then we make the decision. So it was not a decision that was made in haste. Uifangalele says all evacuees have been advised to move back to their homes as of today. We are moving back to uh, uh, normalcy in terms of uh, uh, post-tropical cyclone Zina. And the country is now back into the um, uh, emergency operation mode that we have had for tropical cyclone Winston. Residents in flood-affected areas in the west did not spare any more minutes today as they started cleaning up the ruins left by the flood in the past few days. Nandi was busy from this morning as town councils, businesses, schools and villages kept themselves busy to return to normalcy. Akosita Thale reports. These are the remains of the heavy downpour that struck the western division in the past three days. People getting back to business to clean up the dirt, mud and debris that was brought in by the flood. All of my Nelly people, shopkeepers people, market vendors people, all business people, they lost the thing now. Residents of Nawaka at the Nandi Back Road was busy this afternoon trying to clear water from their compounds as the block drain was making cleanup impossible. But now is the dry drain. But the, the big coca there, that one is the uh, blockage there, all the big trees coming there. But now we're cleaning the house already now. We're using with, uh, all the people we call the coming to help us here. For some, this will be their second cleanup during the week as they had begun cleaning up on Tuesday. However, when water levels rose again yesterday, it made the situation more worse. We come and clean the house four days. One day we come and clean the house, we go back to Magna Muslim School. Again, last night flood came inside. Then now we come, we start to clean the thing. We got no water, a little bit of water because we plenty of people stay here, yeah? four hours here. Yeah? For now, it will take a few more days and weeks or even months to pick up from where they were before the floods brought by the depression. Meanwhile, Nandi Town remained closed for business today as businesses clean up the mess left by the flood. Akosita Tale, FBC News. Business owners in local municipalities around the Western Division are not resting on their laurels and started to pick up the pieces from the devastation of floods in the past few days. And the local traders have the experiences from the past to be thankful for in how losses were kept at a minimal. Madhim Bolai Tamana with this report. The pictures in Ba this morning tells the story of how the next few days will be like in all flood-prone municipalities of the Western Division. Like the water is really low at the moment, water supply. Uh, cleaning, we're getting the water from the factory, bring it up here and cleaning it. It's still in process. And it will take like... Uh, I don't know till tomorrow to set up the shop. The business owners agree that the timely warnings and updates issued by the weather office in the last few days has been the catalyst in safeguarding their stocks and properties. So that was because of mistake, but now today we have to open the shop just for the cleaning. And it was not a mess, but did the cleaning and there's now everything is okay. So tomorrow we're going to start. With it. And I'm telling the public, always be aware and always be ready for any disaster coming or anything, you should get ready. For this pharmacy along Bar's main street, serving those that matter most first is the priority before the shelves will start to be filled. And every time there's a hurricane cyclone, we try to open up our services because we're an emergency service. Yeah? So we need to give out medicines, especially for chronic cases like asthma, they need their asthmatic inhalers and all those things. So that's the service that we try to provide because for us, patient comes first. The business community in the Western Division say all should be back to normal by the weekend. Madhim Bolay Tamana, FBC News. The torrential downpour and flooding over the past few days in the Western Division has been a disheartening experience for many of those who had just started rebuilding from the remnants of tropical cyclone Winston. The downpour has had many up in arms as they start all over from square one. Here's Mavi Mbolaitaman again. The pain of having to start all over again. Amar Chand and his family had just started to piece their lives together when disaster struck again. Mm. We have been badly affected. The rain would not stop causing a lot of damages. We have a van, but we cannot do much, as there is hardly any houses here whom we can take help from. 
Chan says apart from this, he and his family have a very bleak future ahead of them as they are informal dwellers on this piece of land. The landowners do not want to give permission to build our own houses. We have seeked help from the government and we have been told to get permission from the landowners. We can't get the consent so there is nothing much we can do. The hope for this family is that government will look to their plight with favor in rebuilding for the future. Madhim Tamana, FBC News. Business is back to normal in the north with relief and rehabilitation works for TC Winston resuming. The northern division was spared by the heavy rain and winds brought about TC Zena last night. The Divisional Emergency Operations Centre in Lombasa is pleased with the response from the people in the north following forecasts from the weather office that there would be heavy rain along with flash flooding. A lot of lessons have been learned from Wednesday. So when uh, the advisory notices went around to all the people and all the communities in the northern division, they took heed of their advice and uh, they moved to evacuation centres as a precautionary measures. Police were monitoring movement in Lambasa town with the restriction of movement order in place. A school teacher was arrested for breaching this and appeared in court today pleading guilty to a charge of disobedience of lawful order. 62 evacuation centers were activated last night across Vunolebu and Tavuni. All have now been cleared with school to resume classes tomorrow. Mostly those uh, who have moved to evacuation centers were the same ones who were affected in Winston because they were still staying in temporary shelters and uh, we had advised them to, for their own safety, please move back to the evacuation centers. Uh, they move with their own food, with their own clothes. Meanwhile, all roads in the northern division are open except for Aile Crossing, Narelangi Bridge and Gelemumu Bridge which are closed as they are partly washed out. Now the divisional EOC is re-diverting its focus to relief and rehabilitation works for those affected by TC Winston. Eleanor Turangevu, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Fiji Airways lands in Singapore and North to soon have faster internet. Stay with us. Namaste, Golden Point Resort. Raki Raki Me. Mirchi FM is Garam Garam. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Sanjay Tavuake. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Harshina. I love Mirchi FM. It's hot in Long Chaga. I'm Abinasu. I'm Lambasa Se Bolao. I am Mr. Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is so hot. I'm Shalini Devi from Covert FD. They say, I'm Kulti Ewe. They say, Mirchi FM is a must. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back. This is FBC News. All schools will be open tomorrow. Education Minister Mahendra Reddy says this means all schools around the country will be back to normal operations. He adds that those schools being used as evacuation centers after the floods should be cleared by today. Schools have been closed for the past three days. Fiji Airways has begun direct flights to Singapore with the inaugural flight leaving Fiji on Tuesday. The national airline expects the route to become profitable in a short time. However, as Edwin Nunn reports, things haven't started off on a good note due to tropical cyclone Zena. Okay, Bula Singapore. With the cut of a ribbon, Fiji Airways Chief Executive Andre Villun commissioned the airline's latest route to one of the largest airports in the world. Changi Airport in Singapore is expected to open Fiji up to a whole new world. The flight on Tuesday night was almost filled to capacity, mostly locals taking advantage of the introductory offer to visit a new destination. Villun says there will be heavy traffic both ways. This is a very exciting and important development for Fiji Airways and for country Fiji. We're flying to one of the best economic hubs in the world. William did mention that it's disappointing that the first return flight from Changi back to Fiji had to be delayed by about 12 hours due to tropical cyclone Zena. He's confident though that the route will remain buoyant once things settle down. There's 56 million people that move through Changi Airport a year. So it gives an idea of the number of connecting flights. I believe there are 100 airlines that fly in here. 
So the opportunity for us not only to take Singaporeans on holiday to Fiji, but all the surrounding countries, including India and um, Europe, is enormous. Fiji Airways has launched a massive marketing campaign in key destinations with connections through Singapore to tap into a market worth millions of dollars. Edwin Nand, FBC News. With the passing of two tropical depressions and tropical cyclone Xena, the Fiji Electricity Authority is counting its lucky stars that no further damage was sustained. The authority is now focused on completing repair works and energizing areas around the country that have been left in the dark since tropical cyclone Winston. With aid coming in from around the world, the authority has also received much-needed assistance from New Zealand and Tonga with the hopes of more to come. New Zealand currently has a team of 15 personnel in the country who are assisting the authority with restoration works. Also, a team of six is arriving this weekend from Tonga. FEA is awaiting confirmation from both Australia and India on their request for manpower and expertise. So if we get all this additional 70, 80 people you know, from abroad, then definitely we'll be able to speed up work. But as I speak right now, it pretty much looks as if you know, we might get into early June you know, before we are able to wrap it up or probably the end of June. A proposal has been made by government to get Vanua Lebo up to speed when it comes to internet connection. Eleanor Thurangai View reports there are plans to run a fiber optic cable from Suva to Vanua Lebo. Talks are ongoing between the Fijian government and telecommunication providers in the country on the laying of a fiber optic cable to Vanua Lebo. Permanent Secretary for Information and Communication Ewan Perrin says the main aim is to strengthen broadband connection. There is obviously internet connections here. You have um, mobile phones and you have microwave links and so forth. Um, but this will be the first time that we have a dedicated high capacity link um, to connect this island to the rest of the world, basically. The plan is still in its early stages. Last month, Perrin was in Vanoi Levo with a delegation from the ministry looking for possible locations where the cable can run through. There's a project um, run by the World Bank to, to connect uh, Samoa through to Suva. Uh, we, we're looking at that as an opportunity to connect Suva directly to um, uh, Vanoi Levo as well. The news has gone down well with the people in the north. We need uh, fast in, uh, internet in uh, Vanoi Levo because uh, it's uh, internet is uh, really slow. Today's world is technology world and we need technology now. Yeah? So I think as fast as we have uh, technology and everything is okay. We need fast internet connection because uh, sometimes you know when we want to do our work and then it's kind of slow and it takes time. So yeah, so the quicker the internet connection, the faster we do like our work, especially us tertiary students. After locating an ideal spot where the cable will run through from VT level, an environment impact assessment will then be carried out. Perrin says they do not have the total cost of this project, but it is worth several millions of dollars and expected to be completed by 2017. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Fulton Hogan Highways has invested in four new high-tech cable locators that will advance the way its field crews detect underground power and telephone cables at work sites in Suva. New Zealand-based cable locator trainer Ari Decourt recently conducted specialized training with 19 Fulton Hogan Highways employees. The locator tool will give the depth reading and actual pathway line of the cable. Locating underground steel cables via cable locators in a non-destructive method of location, which means that the ground surface does not have to be ripped up. And in sports time now, here's Vashnil with the very latest. Good evening in sports tonight. Nandi ready for Champions League. This and more coming up. Yandra, I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from the Village. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic. I'm Moses from Valley. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Marie the Manaco. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Gold FM. Only the. Good evening. The Vodafone Fiji Sevens side has named a strong 12-member team for the Hong Kong Sevens. 
Missing the cut from the squad is Sevuloni Modenadangi and Joshua Vidi. Coach Ben Ryan has retained majority of his players who were part of the winning team last year. And out of all of the players, Masive Sidakuanga will play his first Hong Kong Sevens. On the eve of the Hong Kong Sevens, the Fiji Sevens side is eyeing for the 16 title at the tournament in the weekend. Coach Ben Ryan believes all the players have fallen on their path in the past few tournaments. The skipper advice to the players before the Vodafone Fiji 7 side turns its focus on the three pool games in Hong Kong. Ryan is expected to use all his weapon during the Mecca of 7s and seal its 16th Hong Kong 7s title in 41 years. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. New Zealand's All Black 7 side are gunning for their fourth tournament with the season in Hong Kong this weekend. Coach Gordon Tijan hopes to test his new players during the three-day tournament. And the Fiji 7 side kicks off the Hong Kong 7 campaign from Saturday morning. At 12.06 a.m., our 7 side plays Canada. Fiji then faces Korea in the second pool match at 4.24 p.m. before meeting Wales in the last pool match at 8.24 p.m. Meanwhile, our coverage for the Hong Kong 7 starts at 5 p.m. from a build-up at 4.30 p.m. You can watch the live coverage of the Hong Kong Sevens on FBC TV and catch the commentaries of Fiji's matches on Radio Fiji 1 and Bula FM. The Nandi football side arrived in New Zealand in the last hour for the Oceania Football Confederation Champions League, which starts tomorrow. The jet setters were held back yesterday due to the cancellation of flights, but are hopeful of a good outing in their first match tomorrow. Roy Deo tells us more. The Nandi football side had to wait for another day to arrive at the games venue and finally made it to New Zealand today, less than 24 hours before their first. I think a lot of play, play, uh, houses were damaged in the flood, but uh, they gave us a time for us to travel with the team. But un unfortunately we could not travel yesterday, but we are trying today to travel again. Nandi failed to impress in the 2014 tournament where they lost all three matches, but Gounder and his team are looking forward to a better performance in Auckland. Players had a meeting today in the morning and uh, I think so the players they decided they'd leave aside what has happened but we are going on a mission to represent our country in Nandi. So I think so the boys are fully geared up for this game. The FC Champions League kicks off tomorrow and he plays Tahiti's A.S. Stefana at 1pm while at the same time on Saturday, Suva takes on last year's runners-up Team Wellington. You can watch both matches live on FBC TV. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. That's all from Sports Desk. Now back to Jackie with business. Digicel has announced that a new premium channel, TV1 Sports, will be added on the Sky Pacific platform from tomorrow, just one week after acquiring the Sky Pacific business. This announcement means Sky Pacific will now have three full-time sports channels, Super Channel, ESPN and TV1 Sports. Digicel Fiji Chief Executive Darren McLean says the new sports lineup is a result of research identifying sports content that Sky Pacific customers are interested in. The trough of low pressure lies slow moving over the eastern parts of the group. All centres hit the 31 mark today. Moderate northwest to southeast winds, moderate to rough seas, cloudy periods with brief showers over most places. That's to be expected tomorrow. And Saturday should see brief showers about the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands find elsewhere. Recapping the main stories for tonight, the cyclone that never happened has left people confused. Cleanup has started in the aftermath of floods and Hong Kong 7s gets underway tomorrow. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to the poll question for this week and we are asking, can the Fiji 7s team win the Hong Kong and Singapore titles? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. Good night. Eileen.
लटका में मिर्ची एफ एम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से साय माने हमारे वेजिटेबल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफ एम नंबर वन है माने में दिनेश हम नैंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जेंट सिप्लाइन में और मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट पे आई लाइक इट मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट